and welcome back to National Tiger Sanctuary for our final uh, web, web series video. Um, today we're going to go back to where we started and talk a little bit more about the tigers that live here on the sanctuary with us. Um, today's topic is going to be this big guy right here. This is Bashir. And Bashir is one of the many white tigers that live here on the sanctuary with us. Um, he was one of the 17 white tigers we actually rescued from the circus industry back in 2017. So he's been with us for just about three years now. So he's still a relatively new resident on the sanctuary. Um, but when we start talking about these big guys, they are an animal that typically has quite a bit of, of uh, confusion or misunderstanding revolving around them. And a lot of that stems obviously from their white coloration, the coat color that they show. So with the white tigers, it's very common for people to associate this animal with snow, with a winter climate or a colder climate, because for us, that would obviously make a lot of sense for this animal to be living in a colder environment in the snowy conditions, uh, much like the big guy, Harriet, who we talked about in our first uh, video, the MERS subspecies, when in reality, this is a cat that actually is found within uh, the jungles of India. So this is the Bengal tiger. Um, the Bengal tigers are obviously the most popular subspecies of tiger. They are still a critically endangered species, um, but there are more of these guys than there are of any other subspecies of tiger. And they are obviously more classically considered to be the orange, the dark orange or rich yellow coloration in their fur that we kind of classically think of as tigers. But they do have this rare mutation, a rare color variation, where we see the white coloration appear with the brown stripes and the blue eyes. Um, now this is a naturally occurring trait. It's the recessive genetic trait for the Bengal tiger, where they will lose their orange coloration and just display that white. They are not albino, so they do have pigmentation. They do have melanin, um, unlike what albinoism is, where you're seeing that complete lack of coloration. So they, they are not an albino species or albino characteristic. It is just the, uh, the recessive variation in their fur coloration. Um, now it is very rare and that's one of the reasons a lot of why you, I think you see a lot of the misconceptions or the, the misunderstanding of these animals is it in, inherently was a very rare trait to start with. Uh, it's believed that we, see, uh, we saw a naturally occurring white tiger out of one every 10,000 cubs. So this is a very, very rare trait. Um, and in the wild, it is actually likely a functionally extinct trait. So it is unlikely we'll ever see another wild white tiger. Now again, it, anything can happen, so it, it's not all possibilities. But with how rare this animal is in general, with how decreased the population numbers are, it is very, very unlikely we'll ever see another wild white tiger. Um, now, a lot of people have some misconceptions as to why this might be. Uh, a lot of people see this cat, and obviously with our color variation, what, the way humans see, they stand out pretty heavily. When we see a white tiger, it's very easy to see them, whereas the orange tigers obviously have a little bit more camouflage, a little bit better blending in. Um, so a lot of people begin to start thinking of this color per, or as potentially a problem as far as their camouflage, their ability to hunt or survive. Now, at a young age, this could potentially be true, but obviously once a tiger reaches Bashir's size, who he's about 400 to 450 pounds, he doesn't really have a whole lot of predators. And he's still a very, very successful predator. So, and with the coloration, most species of other animals actually don't have the same color vision that we do. So, though for us, he stands out very, very heavily. For other species, he may not, he may blend in very well. And again, with that stripe patterning he shows, that really helps break up his silhouette. And so he, he very well could blend in very well. Now with the, the cub survival, obviously he may stand out a little bit more for some of the predatory species that do have a higher range of color vision or are better at, at hunting these animals. And potentially one of the things that, that this genetic trait also comes along with it, one of the things that we see that could help protect that is white tigers are typically born at a larger weight than what we see with the orange tigers and they typically have a, a quicker growth rate. Now that is, uh, it's hard to tell if that was something that has been bred into them while they're in captivity or if that was a naturally occurring trait, but obviously in the wild if these are animals that could potentially see predation at a young age and you're seeing a much higher growth rate in them, that could help protect them and, and ensure their survival for the future or future generations. Now again, why, I, why we, uh, you understand that this is a trait that is still a successful trait, although rare, is that it is still in existence. Again, with evolution, the, the traits that do not work do not exist any longer. So this trait is something that it was still uh, 
they would still manage to survive, but it's just a very rare trait. And that's because both parents that their both parents needed to carry this trait to ensure you see it. Now, unfortunately, that is why we are seeing so many of them in captivity today. So again, in the wild, this is a cat. The last recorded capture date was in 1958. That was a, a trophy hunter captured one of the last white tigers we've ever seen in the wild in 1958. So in the wild, they are very rare, if not non-existent completely, but in captivity, they're very, very common, especially again here on the sanctuary where we have, I believe, 15 white tigers. I have to go back and count right off the top of my head. Um, now, the reasoning for this is this is actually a really easy trait to breed. Uh, being a recessive genetic trait, when you breed a white tiger with a white tiger, you're actually going to end up with a complete litter of white tigers. Um, and that obviously works very well for the entertainment industry, some of the issues where people wanted to see these animals. But unfortunately, it is something that has driven some issues with these cats as a whole. Come here, buddy. You want to know um, one of the things that people realize is though it was it was hard to get these cats to naturally start appearing when you started inbreeding them together you started to see this animal pop up a lot more frequently again breeding mothers and sons uh, fathers daughters and brothers and sisters that were all white you end up with more and more white tigers um, and and though it worked, it gave us a high number of these animals. We unfortunately started to see a lot of the other issues that come along with inbreeding. Um, a lot of genetic deformities, genetic mutations. Some of the more frequent ones that we do see obviously being these animals are commonly cross-eyed. It's something that you see with all white tigers that, that they will um, have the potential of being cross-eyed. You will see things like uh, reduce, re reduced tendon length in their front paws, club foot, um, scoliosis, cleft palate. So there are a lot of genetic mutations that unfortunately have driven this animal to not always be the healthiest cat. Fortunately, the white tigers that live on our sanctuary, we have two cats that are cross-eyed. Doesn't seem to affect their vision as much as you would might think. Uh, they, are, they do look a little off-center to you sometimes, but for the most part, they have very, very good vision. Uh, Bashir here is one of our very, very healthy young males, about eight years old, so he's still a very, very young, healthy male. Um, but obviously, this is an animal that unfortunately has seen a lot of problems within captivity that we are now, unfortunately, having to try to maintain and, and, and care for this and these animals while ensuring that these problems don't exist out into the wild. Uh, again, in the wild, we don't want to introduce any animals out that are genetically impure, genetically unhealthy. And so releasing white tigers, these animals that have been heavily inbred, unfortunately is not necessarily a common practice or one that would be healthy for the population of tigers. So it is likely that this trait, though it may continue to exist within captivity, and like I said earlier, it is unlikely that you will ever see them in the wild again. Now, when talking about the, spe the subspecies as a whole, the Bengal tiger, once again, this is the most popular subspecies in the wild. You see more ba wild Bengal tigers out uh, or in the wild than you do any other subspecies. And obviously, what they, what they, they're very heavily protected with India. They're still suffering from the same complications that many of these endangered species are with poaching, habitat loss, and habitat fragmentation. Um, and so, we are at a heavy conservation effort with these animals and working towards, and hopefully, ensuring their long-term survival in the wild. But again, these are very, very impressive animals. The difference that you're going to see between this guy and Harry, the big guy we started with, if you guys go back and watch our video series, um, typically the immersive subspecies that Harry represents or that we believe Harry likely represents are going to be a larger and bulkier animal. The Bengal tigers can get very large. and In fact, the largest wild tiger ever caught in the wild was a Bengal tiger. So they have the ability to become very, very large, but typically the immersive are gonna have a larger, bulkier body as a whole. Again, due to their uh, environmental conditions with the mer you're looking at the much harsher climates hunting larger prey much more isolated uh, hunting style with prey where these guys are living in a more confined area uh, an area that they're moving through dense foliage areas that are very very not going to contain as big of animals typically as you would see in the open more open areas within uh, Siberia and those ranges um, now tigers obviously have found a way to adapt very well to, to make it as easy as possible to move uh, through these dense foliated areas. Obviously they are kind of lazy. They like to do things as easily as possible. And one of the ways that you see tigers, one of the most common things you see tigers utilizing to move throughout their range is actually water. One of the more things that people are surprised about a lot of times when we think about during domestic cats not being big fans of water, tigers are actually an incredibly aquatic based species. They are an animal that is an excellent swimmer and will utilize waterways as kind of highways through the through the rain or the forest that they live in to make it easier transport on the uh, on ground or other than traveling through the ground. 
Uh, but Big Bashir here, he's a pretty funny cat. He is, he's one of our more rambunctious guys for sure. He loves to let everybody know he is one of, one of the biggest, baddest cats on the sanctuary. Um, but I will answer some questions for you guys. If you have any questions about white tigers or tigers in general, I'd be happy to answer some questions. The first few questions are, are we open and where are we located? Yep, so we are, today is our first day being back open after obviously the uh, shutdown for COVID. Um, we are located just outside of, just north of Branson, Missouri, uh, in, between, in Saddlebrook, Missouri. So uh, we are open seven days a week throughout this, throughout May. Uh, our tours go, we do guided tours throughout the day of the, the days we are open. Um, first tour starts at 10 o'clock, final tour goes out at four o'clock. Um, so we are open and giving tours to the public now. How do, sorry, how tall does he stand? So Bashir, not quite as big as Harry. I'll see if he wants to stand up. He's not as cooperative sometimes as Harry is. Just gotta get a good piece for him there. So you can tell he's still a real big cat, but he's not quite the size of Harry. How tall are you? So I'm about six six two, six three. Wow. So when you talk about him, he's probably about eight, eight and a half feet tall, I would imagine. <laughs> Do you ever get in the cage with him? We are not, at, we are never inside the enclosure with any of our big cats. We are completely on contact facility with all big cats on the sanctuary. So anytime we have to go in and safely clean their enclosure, uh, they will be locked in their bedroom or vice versa if we need to clean their bedroom. So we are never in the enclosure with the animal while they are awake. Do you have more questions? You know, some people jumped on late. Do their stripes get bleached in the sun? They can, yep. So you will see, so one of the more common things that when people come out to see these big guys up close and personal, because obviously it's not, you do see them at our sanctuary a lot closer than other facilities. One of the first things people will typically notice is actually the coloration of their stripes. With, I think, um, entertainment, the entertainment industry and kind of media, what has been portrayed for the white tiger is for them to have be white, a pure white coat with really black stripes. When in reality, most of these white tigers will have more brownish colored stripes, where the orange tigers are actually the ones that you're seeing that more black coloration. So his stripes, when you look at him, especially now that he's starting to kind of lose his winter coat a little bit, you can definitely tell he is more brown than he is black. And they will, as they get older, kind of fade in color and actually bleach out a little bit. Some of our cats um, that do spend a lot of time outside have very, very faded stripes. Their eyes do kind of the same thing, where as they age, they'll actually kind of dull in color a little bit. With Bashir, him and his brother uh, Dakar do have two, are, are very, very handsome. They are two of our more handsome cats, and their eyes are very, very vibrant blue. As they age, it is likely they'll lose a little of that color. We actually see that a little bit with their Uncle Charm, who lives with us as well. Um, he's about 18 years old, and he's definitely, you're seeing a little bit less coloration in him as, as, as his nephews do. Where did Bashir come from? So Bashir was rescued in 2017 from the circus industry, along with seven or 16 other white tigers that lived with us on the sanctuary or uh, that did come to live with us. Some have passed away since then. Uh, but big guy, this big guy came from the circus industry where he would have been used as a breeding cat as a young animal. Does he ever have another tiger in with him? Nope, so he did when he arrived, he actually did live with his brother. Him and his brother Dakar did share an enclosure. Um, tigers are a solitary species, so outside of mating season and when moms have cubs, these are animals that do live by themselves typically. Um, with Bashir and Dakar, what we noticed is that they were never showed aggression towards each other, they did not fight. They kind of avoided each other when they lived together. They didn't spend a lot of time in the same parts of the enclosure. So we identified that it may be better for them to have their own space. And I think they both both enjoy it quite a bit more having their own room, kind of not having to share it with their brother. Um, so though he did come with another tiger, we quickly separated him just due to, uh, to avoid any kind of complications that could come with having two big dominant males living together. What is Bashir's favorite food and or treat? So food wise, he is one of our other cats that will pretty much eat just about anything. I would say consensus with our cats, pork is probably one of the favorite foods on the sanctuary. Um, so he, he's a cat that will eat pretty much anything, but he does enjoy large bone in pieces and pork. Um, and I would say that's probably, but he, he's one that the, as, mu as much food as you can give him is probably his favorite type of food. It doesn't really matter what kind. Um, as, far, as far as treats and toys, Bashir is one of our more destructive cats on the sanctuary. He's a guy that loves to break things and destroy, destroy boxes. 
Um, he loves boxes and things like that. He actually had to have a special toy ordered for him to, to ensure that he could not break it. Uh, if, you pan, if we pan down to the bottom of the hill, we can kind of see his ball down there. Uh, so that big blue ball you see down at the bottom of the hill kind of give you guys an idea. It's hard for people to get perspective and a little far away down there. Uh, that ball is about three and a half feet tall and it weighs 160 pounds. Um, so that's the kind of toy that he needed to play with to en ensure he would not be able to break it. So. Do they have good memory? Yeah, so they do, they do know what's going on. They obviously remember uh, if people have been nice to them or not so nice. Um, we definitely see that when people when they people that they know in the past come out to see them, especially if they were caretakers, they show a lot of uh, affection towards those people. Um, you will hear different noises come out of them compared to what you normally will hear. Um, even on short-term side, uh, when you do something to them that they're not necessarily happy about, if some of the cats that don't like being locked in their bedroom get locked in their bedroom, they will definitely let you know they're not real happy about it for, for several weeks following that. Are there still breeders selling white tigers in the U.S.? Unfortunately, yes. That's something that obviously we are hopefully working towards to eliminate with the private ownership. And with the white tigers, um, obviously the problem with the genetic health is what the main issue that we look at with these. But unfortunately, until we see a more heavily federally regulated system, uh, the buying and selling of these animals is still something that we will probably have to deal with and, and continue working towards uh, eliminating. Do white tigers know that they're different than orange tigers? Oh, I don't think so. I, I think they pretty much just know they're big, some, one of the biggest, baddest animals on the planet and like to let everybody know that, that they're around. Um, Harry and you'll commonly see Harry and Dakar kind of playing with each other, chasing each other around. So I don't think they know they know anything different from each other. Again, they've never looked in a mirror, I don't think, so they probably don't even know what color they really are. How long have you been working with tigers? So I've been at the sanctuary, uh, at the end of May will be four years now, so. Wasn't there one on there? Oh, um, being with other tigers? I think I already asked that. <laughs> have you ever had a tiger escape? We have never had any escape from this uh, sanctuary with our big cats. All of them have. Uh, we've never had any issues with that. The only animal that's ever been able to get out of their enclosure on the sanctuary was our pig, Arnold. Um, again, pigs are very intelligent. Arnold decided he needed to go for a walk one day and decided to root his entire fence line up. But no escapes from any of our exotic okay. animals. And Kristen Freeman also says hi to Bashir. People saying hi to you, bud. <laughs> Lots more snacks. Mm -hmm. There's any more questions? Are white tigers colorblind? Nope. So they do see color. Tigers, again, with all animals in the animal kingdom, they, most of them they have a different color spectrum than what we have uh, as humans. Tigers do, or, so white tigers, just like the, your normal uh, orange tigers, uh, because they are not a different subspecies, they have the same genetics, um, they, they do see color. It is slightly muted to what you will see in humans, um, but they have a much better uh, range within low light conditions. So though we can't see what we might see as complete pitch black, if there's a small amount of light, these guys can see very well in the low light conditions. But mute, as far as color vision, it is slightly muted to what we see. How much do they shed? So each cat's a little different. Some do get very, very large winter coats. Um, others do not. As you see with this big guy, he's kind of he looking a little shaggy right now because he is in the process of shedding out his winter coat. Um, so they do shed quite a bit. You kind of imagine uh, what your uh, domestic dog looks like when they kind of shed their winter coat out, up it to about 450 pounds, and that's what these guys consist of. So. Since they are solitary animals except during mating season, do any of the tigers act differently or show signs of mating season? So with our, it is something we pay attention to. Obviously with our males, it's not as big of a change as what you're going to see. With our females, any of our intact females, they will still go into heat. Um, we'll go into uh, the process where they would be sexual reproductive. And you do see a pretty big behavioral shift within those females. Uh, typically a little more interested in male employees. They like to pay attention to uh, the male big cats on the sanctuary. And they're typically not too interested in food. As far as the big males like this, we don't see a lot of change in them though. Are cubs born with stripes? 
Yep, so the, cut, the stripes on a tiger are like a walking fingerprint. The stripes they are born with are the stripes that they will have their entire lives. It is actually imprinted on their skin. So if you were to ever have, be brave enough to shave a tiger, they will still actually have their stripes. So the cubs are born with their stripes and they've maintained them their entire life. Can they climb trees and if so, how high? So tigers have the ability to climb trees. It's not something they're really designed for. Um, they, just like a domestic cat, they can do it. Uh, but they are so large that their claws actually have trouble supporting that much weight. So it's, it's something they have the capability of doing, but they're not real accomplished at it. Um, so a big guy like this, again, he's not going to be getting too high up in a tree. Again, you have to think the limbs are going to have to be able to support a 450 pound cat. So he's not going too high, but it's something they can do, but we don't, you don't see it real, real frequently. What are some of the major threats to tigers as a result of cub petting? So with the cub petting, unfortunately, again, well, the main problem that we're seeing is the, 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 range in which these animals can actually be interacted with as is very young about eight to 12 weeks of age so a very very short period um, this is an animal that would live with its mom for up to two years in the wild and so removing them from their mom at such a young age to be passed around from person to person uh, you you do see the nutritional loss from not getting mom's milk from not getting her care you do see viral and bacterial transmissions from humans to the cats you're seeing a lot of uh, sleep deprivation again this is a cat that sleeps even as a cub 20 plus hours a day and when they're being handled constantly or they're not getting that care so unfortunately you're just seeing a high amount of just lack of care overall and then pat once they're done with pay to play that's when we see the animals lose their usefulness quote unquote as far as what they can be done with um, so we do have a few cats that had that started their life in that type of system that live with us today um, fortunately did not were not euthanized or not pass away from that system but typically it's the it's the lack of care the, the lack of nutrition and lack of sleep that we're seeing a lot of the issues with are all of your big cats aggressive towards even the employees that they're used to not all of them, no. So every, one of the biggest things that uh, we strive for on the sanctuary is individualized care for each animal. And one of the parts that, uh, ways we achieve that is every staff member does have a very different relationship with each animal. Um, it takes a while to build that. Obviously building trust with these animals takes time. Um, but no, you don't, most of the cats, you will not see a lot of aggression towards most employees. Myself, I have to deal with it a little bit more with the big males just because they do see me as some form of a threat. I don't necessarily agree with it, but it is something I have to pay attention to that some of the big males are not as big a fans of me as some of the female cats are. Um, but no, e each individual does have a different relationship and that's really important for us because again, though I might not notice anything from Bashir, uh, behavior difference from Bashir that uh, one day, another staff member that has a better relationship with him could come out and say, okay, Bashir's not acting correctly. So yeah, no, no, we don't see a lot of aggression from the animals. Again, these are still a wild animal. That is why we are never in the enclosure with them. Uh, but most of us do have a very strong relationship with each animal. Would he bite you if you went in there? Uh, I don't necessarily want to test that theory out. Um, I would assume, again, like what I say with all animals is he does have a mouth. And so I'm not going to ever want to have my hand in that mouth. Again, that's why you see me using tongs to give him a snack just because I don't want my hand anywhere near those big teeth. Um, but so I, I don't, I would imagine he would like to play with me quite a bit. Um, and I, but I'm not ever going to test that theory. So how tall are they on their four feet? So on their four feet, if they're, when they're standing, uh, quadrupedal, you're looking at anywhere from three to, I would say three and a half, four feet tall on their hind end. So again, with Bashir, again, he is a little lower than I, there's a little drop into his enclosure. I'm about six, two, six, three. So you can kind of look, he's about hip height for me. So about three, three and a half ish feet tall. Do we have any protocols for the animals during severe weather? Yep, so that's something, obviously, it is a difficult thing. Obviously, we had a little bit of severe weather past couple days. Um, there's not really a way for us to load every animal up and go take them to an indoor facility somewhere. Um, but obviously, we will always have people on the ground to ensure nothing is going on. A lot of times, if we say we were to going to have a tornado come through the sanctuary or we thought there was a tornado threat, we would go through and lock the animals into their bedroom. And the reason for that is if a main fence line got knocked down, they would still be contained within another side of the fence line. So it eliminates, it starts to help eliminate some of that problem. The cats are very intelligent. They know when storms are coming, they all kind of hunker down in their bedroom and try to get out of it themselves. But the biggest thing we will do is ensure that we always have plenty of staff here on the sanctuary or, or on call to, uh, just in case anything unfortunately does, ha does happen. But fortunately, uh, we've never had to deal with that to this point. So. 
Um, what are the snacks he eats made of? So he's eating chicken. So there's raw chicken bone in. Um, so he, uh, that's what he's getting today. And that's what the snacks that we give out on tour are, is just raw chicken, so. Have any of the tigers grabbed the tongs out of someone's hand? It is something that happens on occasion. Again, it's, it's one of those things that is, they, sometimes you misguide, misguide how far they might push the fence forward to get the meat. Um, so it happens, it's something that we have to go in and, and usually they'll drop them pretty quick and we go in to get them out. Uh, but it's something that, it happens on occasion, Not, but it's much better to have it be tongs than your fingers, so. Uh, and someone asked where we're located. Where are we located? Oh. So we're located just north of Branson in Saddlebrook, Missouri, uh, in between, kind of in between Springfield and Branson on, on uh, Highway 65. So. All right. If you have any more questions about Bashir or white tigers, we can hear raindrops. So. If you have those questions, jump on quickly and ask them because we're getting a little rain. Well, I think all right, that's guys. It. Well, again, I would like to thank everybody for joining us today our, on our final webisode for this period. Uh, again, our educational uh, uh, goals always are continuing, and, and we will continue to be posting things on our social media platform. So. Be sure to follow our page, like posts, and share them with your friends. Uh, it's something that we will continually do. Live videos could return at some point in the coming future or co uh, coming months, but we are working to diversify our educational programs for more school groups and things like that. Uh, hopefully this summer we will have some extra programs going on on the sanctuary and even potentially virtually as well uh, for in anyone interested in potentially uh, signing up for one or trying to get something scheduled. Feel free to email us at stripes at nationaltigersanctuary.com. Uh, we would be happy to try to work through getting something set up for you guys. But again, I would like to thank you guys for helping us during this period, supporting us uh, while we were forced to be closed down for a short period. Again, we are open back up for tours, so if you are close to the area or if you want to make a little day trip, uh, feel free to come out to see us and, and come out and meet the big cats and learn a little bit more about them up close and personal. Uh, but once again, thank you for uh, joining us today. Be, free, be sure to follow, like, and uh, subscribe, and, and share the post, and we will uh, catch you guys on uh, later on.